disclaimer about this topic. I did not choose it. Frankly, I think social media is a breeding ground for narcissists. But Hannah, I'm gonna put her blame on her. She's right behind the camera here. We'll do a little snapshot of her. She's like, this is a really interesting story. You should like talk about how you became a CEO in your 30s. And I was like, I don't want to, but I think it's fascinating enough. And what my goal is, is to not highlight my journey, but to just give hopefully tips on people that are like mid-career professionals or young professionals, maybe even, even later stage professionals or what you can do to help advance your career and, and get where you want to go. Hopefully there's value or wisdom I can, I can offer in that realm. First to talk about my journey, I never wanted to own a company. My core competency or what I wanted to do is like teaching. That's what I like really like to do. And um, I think this is a true story. It might be apocryphal. I don't know. So, so the guy that wrote Tarzan, Edgar Rice Burroughs, I, I think the reason he got into writing was he was like reading books and uh, he was like semi dissatisfied with them. He's like, man, if those authors can write them, I can write them. And then he wrote John Carter and Tarzan and all this stuff. That's like kind of led us in a career. Um, that's kind of my path to owning a company. It wasn't so much I wanted to. It was like I watched other people do it and I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. <laughs> Let me back up a little bit. So the beginning is teaching. The end is, oh, Oh, if they can do it, I can do it. Those are the bookends. Let me put the meat in the middle. My journey into solar was first, I just saw the opportunity was better than the current opportunity I was in. I don't necessarily like sales. I don't like asking people for money or even like dealing with it. But um, I saw that like a lot of my friends were helping people go solar, which I was really passionate about. Like I grew up in a family that did a lot of gardening and talked about renewables and, you know, like be a good steward of the earth. Like that's the family I grew up in. And so when the opportunity came and said, hey, you can help people make this transition to solar and it doesn't really cost them any money they otherwise would have been spending on their utility bill and you can combat like the, the evil utility company. I like I like the story of Robin Hood. I've always resonated with that. I thought this is awesome. So that's why I got into solar with zero intentions of owning a company, just like helping people out and, and, and providing for my family. But what I found in solar is one, it's a very new space. When there's a new space in solar or any any new like market or new product or service, people are starting to kind of figure out it's a lot of chaos. And so the roles that I succeeded in was like not just doing my job, but like creating systems and architecture to help grow and scale companies. Eventually, I was making those systems for other people, like sales processes or operations processes, those kind of things. And I was like, why am I building somebody else's dream when I could just build my own? And so back in 2021, I was in between opportunities and I had a good friend, Thomas Sims, who owned a company and uh, needed some help with those that creating that systems and architecture. I said, hey, what if I come in and uh, take over the lead role in that company and building it? And let's let's like try this experiment out and see how it works. It worked <laughs> really well. And so that's like my own journey. Again, the purpose of this video is not to like talk about how cool that is. I really want to provide advice on people and how to navigate the professional world. The first lesson I learned was like, be confident in what you're good at. I still do to this day, but I didn't believe in my own ability to like deliver, even though like I looked at the numbers and I, I did really well. I was always like a top performer. It took a lot for me to like, want to take the reins of something because I just want to help and serve. I don't want, I don't care who's in the seat as long as it's getting done effectively. So the first thing for me was confidence. I will say that like men typically don't struggle with confidence and women do just be aware of that. Like there's usually some differences there. So like that was the first lesson, be confident in your abilities. The second, which is tied to that is like, know what you're good at. The best analogy for me is like sports. So a quarterback is always going to get paid more than like an offensive lineman, someone on the offensive line or a puncher or whatever, right? Like a puncher on a football team, it's not that their job's not important, like it's important. The quarterback's just more marketable and valuable. But a puncher is good because he's got good legs, it's not because he doesn't have a good arm. What I find a lot of times is people want a certain role because of ego, not because of their talent or abilities. Like understand what you're good at and also understand what you're bad at. Like if you want to be a CEO or a company owner, first you have to recognize if that's even your skill set. So typically like company owners are really good at more system architecture. They're good at like creating a vision and multiplying others. They're not necessarily good at every single thing. They might have one or two superpowers, but they're really good at like empowering others to do their job and making sure all those pieces fit together and creating a vision. If that's not what you're good at, you probably should reconsider like doing that CEO role. That doesn't mean there's not other roles you can grow into, right? So first one's confidence. Second lesson is like, just know your strengths and double down on those strengths and shore up your weaknesses and find roles that like accentuate your strengths in the marketplace. Cause we live in a competitive professional marketplace. And if, if you're really good 
at blocking and tackling, you probably shouldn't be throwing the ball. You know, and as much as you want to do that, you're going to get eaten alive at higher levels. So recognize that. The third lesson I've learned through this like whole journey, what you know, what you, what you can do is important, but who you know is actually probably more, if not just as important as like your own talents and skill sets. That was a really hard lesson for me to learn. A lot of times people come to me and like, what can I do to get ahead of my career or get a promotion my job? It's like, usually that question itself is flawed because there's this idea that, oh, if I work really hard or make a contribution, I'm going to be able to increase my value in the in the career marketplace what's actually more important is who you can bring to the table right so especially on an executive level if you can bring in really good talent and empower that talent like on a like on a team or department level that's actually more important again i'm gonna use a professional sports analogy too like college sports specifically good head coaches are also really good recruiters like we talk about that all the time the head coach doesn't have to be the best at football they don't even know football the best they have to recruit the talent both on the coaching staff and on the player staff, that's what makes a really good like college sports team. And that's very similar in like the work world. It's not just your ability to work hard or do well, it's your ability to bring in outside talent and resources that really can benefit an organization. That's that's the third thing. I think if someone's looking to get ahead in their career, the strength of your network and how do you utilize that network is more important than what you can do yourself. Again, you have to set that ego aside and look at what the team can do, not just what you can do. So. Hopefully that was a good journey on not just like what I've done to my career to be fairly successful early on, I think. There's obviously people that are way more successful than I am, but more importantly, like tips and tricks you can use in like your own career to help you get ahead earlier than later. If you like this content, like and subscribe. Appreciate you listening and we'll talk to you next time.